What up nerds, Machina here. Today we're upcycling an old vinyl record to make an Iron Man wall clock. Firstly, we'll make a template that we can use to cut out a pattern. Simply put, we can add a picture of a record and a motive in Photoshop to create a final design. It's quite simple really and it doesn't take a lot of time. Before printing it, we're gonna flip it. This is because some of the paper will stick to the vinyl record. I'll explain that later. Now we just gotta take our prints and tape the two halves together. I mean, we can't have just half a template, right? Then we can tape it onto the record. I tried doing this without any underlay and, well, that wasn't a success. So we'll nail it to a piece of wood just to keep it rigid. I'm actually using a wood burning tool. It's perfect for this project because of the exacto blade tip. It basically melts the vinyl and that makes some of the paper stick to the melted areas. That's why we flipped it earlier. This way we can't even see it from the front. While making this design, I thought it would be cool to be able to change it from time to time. So I made these other designs as well. This one's from Lord of the Rings and this one's from the Portal games. This is a simple and cheap wall clock that we'll be using. Don't need these anyway. Now this one's nice, but we need something that we can attach it to. Yep, you guessed it, more acrylic glass. It's not a proper project without LEDs, am I right? We're cutting it to the same size as the record and the scroll saw does its job somewhat rough but we can clean that up with a file or sandpaper. We're drilling a hole in the middle, placing the clock as centered as possible and tracing the outlines of it. We have to make a hole in the acrylic because we kinda have to access the batteries inside the clock at some point and then it would suck not to be able to access it just because we glued the whole thing shut. The battery is still kind of hard to reach, so we need to expand the hole a bit with a Dremel. If we're gonna see the LEDs properly, we have to sand down the surface of the glass. Then we can use a blowtorch to smooth out the edges. I should have used a blowtorch to smooth out the edges before sanding though, as I had to fix it up a bit afterwards. It's not a big deal as long as the surface is sanded and rough and the edges melted and smooth. We're at the assembly part of the build now, starting with the clock. By the way, kind of important to line up the battery input with the custom cut, just saying. The kind of glue we'll use is quick drying epoxy. That should be strong enough. The electronics are actually really simple. We mainly need an LED controller that we can use to change the color and the lighting effects. And an RGB LED strip. This is the signal wire and the power input on the controller. At the other end, we can connect the LED strip to the controller like this. A shrinking tube will make it stay in place. We can add one more shrinking tube over the LED strip just to avoid any issues later and make it more durable. I think we can add one last shrinking tube here just to clean up the cable mess a bit. After cutting the LED strip to a suitable length, we can use hot glue to attach it to the inner edge of the acrylic glass and some more hot glue for the controller. All we need now is a 12 volt power cable. And we are done with the electronics. We gotta be a little careful here while disassembling this as we don't wanna break anything now. All right, we're good. What's awesome about this clock is that there's a nut at the bottom here that will hold the record in place. This makes it possible to switch between the designs we made earlier. If that ain't cool, then I don't know what is. The clock ends are way too long, so we'll use some nippers to shorten them. I'm pretty sure these are called tube support sleeves. I picked them up at a hardware store because they are just the shape and the color I wanted. They'll act as spaces between the wall and the clock, so that we'll have space for the electronics. We're just gonna fill them with some hot glue to avoid any glue mess. Finally, we'll use this S-hook to hang it on the wall. Let's just hide the cable and we are finished! As you can see, we can change the colors with the remote. I really like the light blue for the Iron Man theme, and it even looks good in the light. Here I've changed it into the Lord of the Rings theme with the warm golden light. I'm so glad that it's modular. Thank you for 10,000 subs, that's totally crazy. I think it's so awesome that this channel has grown a lot lately. If you enjoy watching our videos, I just want to remind you that we do have a Patreon if you by any chance want to support us. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>